Hi everybody, Martin at Flick and Feathers again today and I'm tying this fly for you, this wee scruffy thing. It's just a soft tackle, wheelie really one. Fantastic fly for river carp. Um, and carp in still waters as well. Um, very, very effective. It's a good sort of generic pattern if you're not sure what what's working best. If it's a new water or somewhere you've never been, you know, you, this is a good starting point, tied in different sizes and weights. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel. Get access to the monthly Titan classes, enter the giveaways, and get some members only content. Oops. Alternatively, like the video, watch it all the way to the end. share it, comment, that all helps the channel, helps other people to see the videos. So, I've got my hook in my vise, this is a Kamazan B200, deep water nymph, right? Whenever I want something longer on the shank for carp now, this is sort of my go-to hook, especially in the smaller sizes. I don't think there's a another hook that's available in these sizes that are as strong as this hook. Um, and that's often a problem when you're going down fishing smaller things for carp, right? Especially when the bigger fish, like a lot of the trout hooks will just bound, bend out. And I've put on a small amount of lead wire, but you can weight the whole shank, you can make it heavier or light, or fish it unweighted, it's up to yourself. Um, I just want enough here to help it break the, break the film um, and then sink quite slowly. This fly, I think, is very good on the rivers for when there's stuff falling in. Um, caterpillars or whatever, if the fish are used to feeding from... Or even seeds, stuff falling in, this is ideal. It doesn't sink away from them too quickly. It's non-threatening. It just might be food. So... I'm using Fly Fire Organs Uni in 8 I like the fluorescence head, it gives you a wee hot spot at the head to catch their eye. And for the tail I'm just using a pinch of rabbit. Um, you could use anything. Wool, marabou, a wee scruffy bit of dubbing. Anything will work. Don't want it too long. See, about just over half a shank length and I'm going to just take a couple of turns a thread, maybe three to position it and then I'm going to hold the under fur and just whip out most of these guard hairs because they're too long and I'll come back to that and then I'll tidy up and just run forward and this is not a fussy fly at all So, rib, any kind of wire, it's in a suitable size, small wire, extra small, this is silver but you can use whatever you like, really, like, tie these in a range of colours, black, rusty brown, <coughs> olive, sort of done colours, nice, whatever you like. So. For the body, I'm, I'm using a dubbin. The traditional woolly worm would obviously be chenille. But I've just got some brown EP shrimp dub. It's quite nice. It's got a wee bit of flash. It's quite a long staple. And I'm going to get some a couple of bits of Senu's shaggy dub. Some of these are a wee bit too long. I might cut them. So that they pick out a wee bit better. And then I'll just get this dubbed on. And I can dub it fairly heavily because I'm going to brush it quite aggressively. Take my thread back to the bend, get that started, and just tighten it up. And you'll see there's no much in the way of rubber legs sticking out at the moment, but they're in there. 
take away the excess. A wee bit extra here, I'll just tighten that up. Just finish the head there. And I'm, I'm leaving myself plenty of space, right? Um, because I'm using hen hackle, I'm going to, need to use, I'm going to be struggling for the length, even even using a genetic, it can sometimes be a bit of a struggle to get down this long shank hook. So I'm going to get a fairly long hackle. Um, it can be twice the hook gap and barb length. Right, I want it plenty of movement. Uh, at least at least one and a half. That'll do. <clears throat> I'll get as much usable fibre as I can out of this. Tie it in. I'm going to fold this stem back, tie over it. And I'll just break it away. Just makes for a tougher, more durable fly. Grab that with my hackle pliers. And I'm, I'm not going to take a full turn, a straight turn at the front, because I won't get down, I don't think I'll get down the body if I do that. Oops. Your hackle brakes just go back. And depending on yourself, how heavily hackled do you want it? There's four wraps around, along the body. That seems like enough to me. You could stretch them out and do three. Up to you. I'm just going to chase that with my rib. Come across it. Don't don't worry about catching the rib or anything, just get that up. They're catching the hackle fibres or anything, just get it up and get a full turn at the front. And then tie it off, bend it over the thread. Secure that in. Bend and break it away. And my hackle flyers came off. And took the hackle tip with them, so that's fine. <clears throat> and then I'm going to finish the head with just a wee Indian hen back feather. It's a wee bit darker than the green wool that I put in the body. But I'll tie this in by the tip this time. Try that again. Want the good side facing me. Three turns down. Fold the tip of the hackle back. Come right back up the head. Now that's lost. That's that tip so short it's got to disappear. And then I'll just wind this until I think I've got enough. It will depend on the feather. Depend on your taste. But I think I'll probably use all of this. I'll just strip away that fluff. And that looks about right to me, so come across the thread. And I'll sweep everything back and build up a nice bright head. Snap that away. A bit long. So just back that off. If you're not happy, you can just go back. I just I've made that head just slightly long. So I'm just going to come back and position it as I like. If you hold on to everything, nothing will move. And that's nice. Just want finish. And you can use a whip finish to help shape your head as well. And another. Come in, snip away your thread. Bit of varnish. I know people, some people think that if you varnish carp flies, they'll not eat it, but it's, that's nonsense. 
um, clean the eye. I varnish all of my cart flies. Uh, I've got cart flies with epoxy heads and all that that work very, very well. The fish do not care about the about the cement, right? I mean, if you tied it up on that mall, on that day, maybe it would make a difference, but. Generally speaking, if the fly's been in your box, I mean, you're using dyed materials and all this. Stinking a camphor because of the insect repellent. Don't worry about cement. Right, so I've brushed that pretty hard there um, to free up some of these rubber legs. I just you can come in with your scissor. Free them up. And, you know, as you fish it, more and more of them will work free. You catch a couple of fish, you, get, you grab the fly with your forceps. It gets leggier and m more full of movement, which is great. But it doesn't do you any harm just to get a few extras cut loose. And don't be, you, I mean, you can cut them. Don't worry about them, you know, you can snip them to get them free. But there you go, a wee scruffy thing, but oh, it's deadly. And I'm sure you could catch other species on it as well. I've, I mean, I've caught bluegills and bass on these, but as a cart fly, it really is a very good option for a lot of laws. Tie them big, tie them up to a size six, or whatever, um, you'll not be disappointed. So, hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it, if you did, come and give a like down below, and I'll see you for another video. Till then guys, bye!